The poor farmers, as a rule, raise only two sons and one daughter and kill babies beyond this number. They especially dislike to raise daughters, with the result that there are more men than women and many bachelors in the country. A baby is often killed at birth by drowning in cold water. It dies after crying a short moment. Based on an investigation made in 1936 of a village about 80 miles west of Shanghai, Fei Xiaotou noted that in a census of a village taken in 1935, the ratio of females in the age group 0 to 5 was unusually low, 87 girls to 118 boys. Moreover, only 131 families, or 37% of the total, were there girls under 16 among their children, and in only 14 families was there more than one girl. Some Westerners who carried out field studies in China during the 1920s and 1930s discovered that the number of males exceeded the number of females, but did not put this down to female infanticide. John Lossenbach concluded from his study that in both North and South China, the, resi the resident rural population was characterized by a large proportion of males. He arrived at an overall ratio of 108 males per 100 females, finding even fewer females and males at ages under 20. For example, for North, for North China, he tabled, 112 male, he tabled 112 male births per 100 female. For South China, 113 male births per 100 female. The reasons he gave for this disparity were under enumeration of females and a higher mortality rate among young females. While carrying out field work in China in 1935 to 37, Olga Long heard of many cases of female infanticide from both Chinese and Western observers, and the hospital records she used for her study contained matter-of-fact references to infanticide made by Chinese social medical workers. If Long's figures are to be believed, there were more girls and boys in the under five age group, and the real discrepancy between males and females began to appear in the five to nine age group. How can this be explained? They probably revealed the preferential treatment of sons resulting in indirect female infanticide. Even when baby daughters were not killed at birth, they had less chance of surviving the infant years because of differential treatment of children. In poor families where there was only a small amount of food available, sons were often given a larger share, and the frequent epidemics took a heavier toll of girls and of boys. Indirect female infanticide was a characteristic common to all periods of Chinese history. One would think that with China's current economic success, the practice of female infanticide has come to an end. Indeed, sex-selected abortion is taking the place of female infanticide as a main cause of China's sex imbalance, but female infanticide persists. A well-known practice is inserting sewing needles into infant girls' bodies. A superstition in China is that pushing needles into a girl's body can scare away a female spirit preventing her from reincarnating as a family's child. Some victims were unaware that needles are implanted in their bodies until they're adults. Women have, have reported finding dozens of sewing needles embedded in their bodies, some which have pierced vital organs. In one case, 23 needles were discovered in a woman's brain and torso, making the x-rays look like a dartboard. Doctors believe the needles were driven into the woman's body when she was days old. One in the top of her skull could only have been stuck there when the bones in her head were still soft. The hospital said they wanted her dead. The fact she's still alive is a medical miracle. Today, Chinese men outnumber women by more than 34 million. An international industry of bride trafficking has developed. Women and girls are abducted from neighboring countries, bought from family members, or lured with promises of work. Chinese men buy these women and girls, imprison, rape, and forcibly impregnate them. The victims include underage girls. They may also be sold into the sex trafficking industry.